What's going on guys? Sorry it has been so long since I've posted a knife review. I want to get back into what I posted an adventure video a few weeks ago, so make sure and check that out. Um, but I'm going to be getting back into doing knife reviews. Can't promise a content flow that will be very specific, but I'll try and do them as, as much as possible. Anyway, today, first of all, I want to remind you to like and subscribe. And second of all, I want to thank my boss, Eric, because he lent me this really, really cool Swiss Army knife. And we're going to be talking about this. We're also going to be talking about the uh, Swiss Army uh, recruit. And we're going to be just talking about Swiss Army knives, how cool they are, you know, what are their functions in the modern day. So instead of doing your classic what I like, what I dislike, I'm just going to kind of go on. I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm, I am going to mention things that I like and dislike, but I'm also going to kind of talk about why should you carry a Swiss Army knife? Uh, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe there there's just better options. You know, They still have a place in the modern world when you have inexpensive knives like this Ontario Rat 1 uh, that you can get for you know 30 bucks. Uh, so what, what place do they kind of have in this modern world? <clears throat> First though, I want to look at this really cool knife. So Eric, if you're, if you're watching, you can kind of correct me in the comments uh, about the story of this knife. So uh, my boss Eric served in the Air Force, and he, um, when they were doing kind of this joint training uh, exercise with uh, with the um, kind of other militaries around the world, some of the United States allies, he was uh, speaking with someone in, I believe it was the Swiss Air Force. Um, obviously, Swiss Army knife, right? Um, they are uh, issued to uh, to individuals who, who serve in Switzerland. Um, and the gentleman who was the kind of joint trainer from Switzerland <clears throat> gifted him this knife. And this, apparently, I believe, is their standard issue kind of utility knife that they are given uh, in the uh, Swiss Air Force. This is really cool. And so if you've kind of handle Swiss Army knife, you own a Swiss Army knife, you're going to be used to something more like this, right? Kind of the classical red polymer style with, you know, this has uh, one big knife, a, a smaller knife, a flat head, and, you know, um, uh, a, a Phillips head. You have some tweezers and a um, <clears throat> toothpick. This has similar stuff, but it's designed differently. It's very, very different. You can see that uh, Victorinox logo right there. Uh, and then you can, let's zoom in real quick. Oh, that's the glare is really rough. <laughs> uh, it's not one to zoom in. But if you'd see that, um, if we get that to focus, it would say Victorinox, uh, you know, Swiss made, right? Um, these are all Swiss made. But let's look at this one because this is really cool. So what I love about this specific one is you can see that it has this quick opening. So it's one-handed opening. Much prefer that, you guys know, to something like a, 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 nail, uh, a nail opener. That's why I added this thumb stud to uh, the uh, Buck 110. Right, and so this also, unlike most Swiss Army knives, has a liner lock, right? So this is a very usable knife. Um, now you guys know I prefer plain edge blades, but their serrations, especially for someone in, um, say, the Air Force who might have to cut, um, you know, a belt or something like that, that serration is going to do that easier because it's going to bite in and tear. So something like that is going to be very effective. So I like that that has a liner. I think that's really cool. Um, you deploy that. And then that liner, which you guys can see, it's kind of, let me get this to focus because this is important. Yeah, there we go. So that liner also works when you're opening up the flat head as well, or the Phillips head. I don't know which one. Let's see. Yeah, this Phillips head. So look at that. So that liner not only works for that blade, but it also works for here. I think that's just cool. You know, that's just... In ingenuitive, right? Like it's, there's a lot of ingenuity to this design. It's a very useful, very uh, purpose-built knife. And then you have the, um, you know, this is a full-on right there, full-on Phillips head right there. And there's an awl right there as well, which would be used to like punch a hole in a belt or something like that. So he was gifted this knife by the gentleman in the, in the uh, Swedish Air Force, I believe. I believe that's the story. <clears throat> And uh, he just, he wanted to commemorate, you know, they got along really well and he wanted to say, hey, this is, you know, this is what we would carry. This is what we would have uh, on us when we're flying. And um, I wanted to give this to you. And I think this is so cool because this is a, this is a Swiss army knife, you know, something like this. It's great to have in your pocket, right? It's very useful, very, um, very uh, just day to day useful. But this is a knife that, you know, you're going to want to do, you're going to have the options to do some more capable work with because it has that liner, because it's a little more heavy duty, and also because it fits comfortably in your hand. So I think that 
this is a really, really cool knife. I love the story behind it. Um, as far as stuff I don't like about it, you know, it's a Swiss Army knife, right? Even though it is differently styled, even though it's, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be quite like this. Um, you know, there are some stuff that I don't love about it, right? I think that that liner goes over maybe a little bit too far. Um, but, you know, this isn't a blade. You're not trying to flip it open all the time. You know, it's not one of those essentially bladed fidget spinners, right? So I think that overall, this is just a really cool design. And what do I like about it? I like the style. I like that it's usable. I like that it's comfortable. I like that, unlike most Swiss Army knives, it has more, it has more, um, overall usage right more heavy duty usage and i love the story behind it and eric thank you so much for letting me borrow this and and looking at it because it's just it's got a cool story to it so when you're looking at these knives <clears throat> in comparison to say let's i think the most apt comparison honestly would be something like this right the leatherman sidekick now leatherman sidekick has a lot of tools very similar to a knife like this um, the difference would be the pliers um, so when you're talking about why should I carry a Swiss Army knife? Well, the primary comparisons I'm going to make and I would think are, are kind of most appropriate would be to something like a multi-tool, right? Something that it has a blade, yes, and that might be a big function of the knife, but you're going to use it for a lot more. Um, you regularly use these things. Um, say you, you work in construction and you want to have a Phillips head, you want to have a flat head, you want to have, uh, you know, all these other tools so that you're not having to carry a tool belt around all the time, right? So what are the pros and cons between these two things? Well, I think it's quite obvious when you can see the construction of this. This thing weighs a lot more. I don't have the specs in front of me, but this probably weighs about twice as much as this does. Um, there are a few more tools. Obviously, the big thing is the pliers. If pliers are important, then a multi-tool, a standard multi-tool like a Leatherman, or you know a Gerber, one of those multi-tools are gonna be a better option. But if pliers are not key to what you do and what you use a multi-tool for, I would go with a Swiss Army knife. The reason is, is they're way more lightweight, the steels are gonna be comparable, we'll get to that later. Um, and they're just easier to hold, they're easy to conceal. Yes, this has a pocket clip, but this can go in your coin pocket and you will just not notice it's there. Um, there's a decent amount more capability in this but if you don't need those pliers and maybe, you know, a few other tools that this might have like a saw and you will use, you know, maybe the flat head or the Phillips head or something like that, this is going to be a better option just because how much more lighter it is. And then if you also like, you know, having a full size knife, you can carry something like both of these. And this probably weighs about as much as the multi-tool would, both of these together. So if having those pliers is not crucial for what you do, I would say go with something like a Swiss Army knife. So that's kind of one of the areas that I think Swiss Army knives are still incredibly valuable and important is, you know, they, they're essentially multi-tools. They're just a little bit less capable. So back in the day, if someone was carrying a knife before kind of the, let's say, pocket knife revolution, feel silly saying that but it's true you know there are a lot of a lot of um, people interested in in nice pocket knives uh, but back in the day if someone was carrying a pocket knife a lot of times it was something like this Swiss Army knife um, this was maybe a little more uh, special so maybe not something like this but something more like this Swiss Army knife maybe they were carrying a standard slip joint like this Rough Rider right here uh, just various brands you know a couple blades it's slip jointed it's not locking or they were carrying something like this Buck 110 right and so there weren't that many options. And so the Swiss Army Knife was a great option. And there's a reason they still issue it to people in the Swiss Army because there is so much use in this lightweight tool. There is so much use in, in the various tools in here. And I cannot tell you how many times, whether it be at church, in my everyday life, work, whatever, where my Swiss Army Knife or my multi-tool has come in handy, has been used, has been needed. Um, it is so, so very often. And so what's cool is with these, with these Swiss Army knives, even this one, this is very, very lightweight for its size. With these knives, you have this vast capability for something so lightweight. And that's kind of where I see them fitting in the culture, right? This is cool because it's older school, right? But it weighs a ton and it has one single use. It's a knife. It's a capable knife. It's, it's still a great knife, great design. And I, I adore this knife. But it doesn't have 
the capabilities of being a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, a nail file, a regular file, you know, tweezers. It doesn't have all those capabilities it, it, like, like this knife does, and even more so like this awesome Air Force one. So I think that that's where they fit in. I think that they are lightweight multi-tools that you can throw on a keychain. I could probably, th it's a little bit bulky for a keychain for me, but you know, one of the smaller ones would definitely work. I had an Alox one I used to keep on my keychain. That thing was sweet and I lost it. Um, but you know, it's something you could keep on your keychain, one of these smaller ones. It's lightweight, you don't notice it. And it's still, it's just very, very capable for what it is. Not gonna be as capable as a full size knife like this, but it's gonna have about 70% of those capabilities. A lot of people say, you know, multi-tools are about like 70% as good as, you know, the various tools that they actually have on them. So that is where these Swiss Army knives fit in. They are lightweight, capable tools. They're still very relevant, and I absolutely recommend you carry them. What do I not love about Swiss Army knives, though? Because I gotta talk about this. Um, we've kind of talked about the philosophy, what I think's unique, what I think's cool about them. I'm not the biggest fan of the 1.4116 steel. I'm pretty sure it's just 4116. Cold steel is relatively well known for producing their 4116 Krupp. Um, <clears throat> it's just a standard stainless steel, low grade stainless. From what I can see, it's kind of like 420, 420HC. Um, not like Buck's 420HC, that's gonna hold an edge very well actually, kind of like VG10 would. So I'm kind of, uh, I guess you could call it when I, you know, I talk about my neutral points, right? In my videos, you could call it a neutral point. I'm okay with it because it's very rust resistant, right? It's just about as rust resistant as VG10 without nearly the edge holding capabilities. The reason I'm okay with it and the reason I won't talk about it as being something I really dislike, even though I mentioned it was something I dislike, it's not something I really dislike. The reason I'll say that is because it, it's like a specialty steel essentially, right? So like H1 is like completely rust resistant and Spyderco uses that on a couple of knives, like specifically dive knives, right? This is almost like that. Um, it, it's, it's super, super rust resistant. So when you're in humid environments, you just don't have to worry about it. It takes an edge very, very easily so you can sharpen it on a rock. You know, you don't need a ton of stuff to, to be able to sharpen it. So I don't necessarily dislike it, but it would be close to kind of leaning on that edge of, ah, I don't love it. I would like to see something more like, I don't know, um, let's say 420HC like Buck does it, or even like a 440C. Um, even this, Rough Rider, very inexpensive knives. They do a 440A and it's not as stain resistant, but it holds an edge actually relatively well. I, don't, I really don't mind that. Um, but something like Buck's 420HC, um, that's tempered very well, but also still in an inexpensive steel. I think that would be fantastic on Swiss Army knives. I know they've, they've done various different kinds of steel and when you get into nicer steels, you pay more, right? This was less than 20 bucks. Um, so for, for the price range and for what it does and how rust resistant it is, I'm okay with it. So in closing guys, Swiss Army knives are still cool, especially if you can get your hands on something like this, right? Um, I mean, just a unique style. It's got that coat of arms. Um, you know, and if you have, Eric, if you're in the comments, let us know if you know what that means. I believe that's just like maybe the Swiss, uh, Swiss uh, Air Force's coat of arms. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have any kind of stories about Swiss Army knives, what you've used them for in the past, maybe in, you know, um, outdoors use, military service, just everyday lives, let me know. Swiss Army knives are, are really cool. I'd recommend you have at least a couple. Um, and uh, especially something like this, you know, get, get a unique one, something that has all the tools that you really like and you need because they make so, so many. So should you get one? Absolutely. Pick up whatever style you like because there are so many. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. First of all, Eric, thanks again for letting me borrow uh, this really, really cool Swiss Army knife. Um, we got a few knives coming up in the channel. What do we have? We have the Recon Tanto. I'm going to be Cold Steel Recon Tanto, I'm going to be reviewing. We have the Cold Steel Kobun, I'm going to be reviewing. We have the CJRB, I can't remember the specific model name, but we have a CJRB we're gonna be looking at. We got a, a SOG, we got a Spider Co. we got quite a few I'm gonna be looking at. Um, so make sure and come back to the channel. I can't promise timelines as far as when I'll be posting them, but I promise it won't be another two months before it happens. But anyway guys, Thanks so, thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.